Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I'm pretty sure this isn't a Christmas movie. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss Tucker and Dale vs Evil, which came out in 2010, 2011 by director Eli Craig. You're right Ian, this is not a Christmas movie and this is our Christmas special. And that is because this has been one of the most requested films. Yes. It is also a Patreon requested film. And I just thought, we, we, we've left an actual Christmas movie too late to, to do. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot of Christmas movies out there. And this was kind of like a present to our, uh, ourselves as well. A present to ourselves and a present to you guys. Because if you've never seen Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, stop the video. Go and get a copy of it. And you're going to have one hell of a Christmas. <laughs> Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? The story follows nine teens that head out to the woods for a wicked weekend of beer and partying. They come across a pair of hillbillies, Tucker and Dale, and are immediately intimidated and scared by them. But Tucker and Dale are actually a pair of really cool dudes who have just gone up to the woods for fishing and they have to deal with the teens killing themselves. We have had a doozy of a day. A real doozy. This film kind of generated a lot of buzz and a lot of word of mouth yeah. long before anyone really got to see it. There was a, a an unfinished leaked copy of the film that arrived on the internet and those that are kind of big into the horror genre yeah. kind of caught wind of this and somehow managed to see a copy of it. And yes, you know, some of the effects weren't finished and some of the music wasn't done, but ho holy shit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this film was just knocked it out of the park. It was like, th this is fantastic. Where did this film come from? And word of mouth continued to, to go around. And, you know, it was a, a small independent film made on a budget of about five million uh, filmed in Canada yeah. uh, under Canadian film production uh, kind of you know, financing. Uh, this film finally came together, but of course it sort of sat on shelves for years before it was finally finished and then distributed. And that was the main problem, is the director couldn't find a distributor for the film, so it only went to a select few theatres. Yeah. And then it was towards the end of 2011 that it became available on home DVD and, and Blu-ray, which is where a lot of people then saw this film because of the word of mouth as well. I remember seeing this in our local supermarket when I'd gone shopping with my wife and I, I was perusing the shelves like, oh, that looks interesting, that looks interesting. And then I saw this front cover, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, with Alan Tudyk and Tyler Labine on the front cover. Now, first off, Alan Tudyk, how did that joke ever pass me by? <laughs> I mean, I know I pronounce things really badly, but it... It does say two dick, right? Yeah. So, two dick. Yeah. Okay. Just going with that. <laughs> two dick. Alan two dick. I mean, Wash from Firefly. Absolutely. Fucking One of the most beloved characters ever. Steve the Pirate from Dodgeball. Yeah. You know, this guy is just friggin' amazing. And when we went and saw Serenity in the cinema, you know, if you, if you know the scene, you know the scene. It, it was just deathly quiet in that cinema. So we were still trying to get over that. Still at that point when, when I saw this film. Tyler Labine, Sock from Reaper. One of my most favourite shows that got cancelled too early. And immediately seeing him on the front cover of this DVD, I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this? What, the, what, 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 what? And so I rushed home. I watched the trailer. I was like, that was the most amazing trailer I think I've ever seen in my life. And I rushed back to the supermarket and I bought it. And then I rushed over to Gary's and I was like, dude, we have to watch this. And he's like, what's that? And I'm like, I don't know, but look, look, he's on the front cover. And we sat down and we watched it and the film massively uses miscommunication and misunderstandings so well. Oh, of course, you know, this sets itself up as a, you know, a formulaic slasher horror movie. Yeah. It follows all the beats and, you know, the filmmaker and the script writer who were friends you know, they're big fans. They grew up watching Friday the 13th, Deliverance, Evil Dead, Wrong Turn, uh, Tix Chainsaw Massacre, Shaun of the Dead, you know? All of the classics. All of the classics and just kind of melded them into, into this film. And, you know, there's not many films that can walk the horror comedy tightrope so yes. well. 
uh, and this one, you know, it, it sets it up, you know, Right at the beginning, and this is a, a small point of contention I have with re-watching the film. Okay. And that is, it's the found footage kind of yeah, news the, presenter. Yeah, the journalist looking for the, a story. The journalist who gets attacked suddenly, and then it cuts to film, you know, th like three days ago. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it kind of, okay, so that immediately goes, this is a horror film. And then you set up these kids in a car, driving off to go get booze and alcohol and, yeah. and whatnot. And then, of course, they have that slow drive-by of two hillbillies <laughs> drinking beers, giving them the eye as they ride past. And you're just like... <laughs> you're like, okay, that's a bit bit dodgy. But, you know, the, then the film just goes, okay, audience, here's the joke. These guys are just your everyday normal hillbilly guys. <laughs> Friendly, heart of, you know, heart of gold, wear their soles on their sleeves, yeah. you know. And, uh, but the kids don't see that. They, they see them as creepy as scary as potential, you know, murderers. Well, you've got Chad, haven't you? Uh, played by Jesse Moss, who is just your atypical dick. Yeah. He's the fucking college kid who's got the khakis, he's got the girls, you know, he's got everything and he looks down on the hillbillies. Yeah. But he weirdly somehow manages to convince all the other eight teens that that's exactly how you're supposed to see these hillbillies. We've got Katrina Bowden playing Alison, your virginal, you know, survivor of the movie. She just has that look. She looks pretty smart. And she looks at Chad like, oh, well, maybe you're wrong. But Tucker and Dale don't make it easy for themselves. You have that awesome moment where, you know, he was, you know, she was shopping. Yeah. And she caught him, like, staring at her across the aisle. Well, he couldn't see her, actually. He was on the other side. Looks, I think he was staring at the eggs. Maybe, yeah. yeah, yeah. She moved that thing. But then he was staring at her, whether it was on purpose or not. And you have that awesome moment where he's outside and he's eating pickled eggs. <laughs> and he's talking about how he wants to go over and talk to these college girls. who doesn't know how. So Tucker just tells him, you know, laugh and have confidence and smile. So he goes over there. He says one line and then he just creepily laughs and smiles at them. But he's wet. he's got the scythe. <laughs> he's got a massive scythe. You guys uh going camping? <laughs> <laughs> it's like the imagery of death just yeah. walking towards them. And immediately for me that's that's what makes this film so brilliant is that you you see the teens and it's your atypical like you said cliche formulaic fucking all these guys are going to be dead by the end of the movie. Yeah. But the intelligence is in the script writing for Tucker and Dale. You know, Dale is... I wouldn't say he's weak. He's just like a big cuddly bear. You right. know, he always wants to be nice and polite and friendly and help people and all that kind of stuff. And Tucker, he's the streetwise one. Yeah. You know, he knows, like, like you said, he tells him, this is how you should talk to girls. You know, be yourself, you know, show them who you are. They'll like that. But D uh, Dale is all clumsy. And so literally the way he delivers his lines just m makes him look like the scariest motherfucker you find. Because <laughs> he's so nervous. <laughs> it doesn't get any better when they're pulled over by the cop. No. <laughs> well, of course, they're drink driving. Yeah, first off. And then he spills beer on his lap. And, he, uh, and and Dale has to get down to wipe it off. Yeah. He gets his shirt caught. So when the cop turns up at the window, you've got two men who look like they're doing something, and one of them's got his shirt off. <laughs> Howdy, officer. Hi. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah. But they explain to him that, you know, they're going out to their vacation home, the cabin in the woods, yeah. and he tells them. He's like, nobody goes up there. There's nothing up there but pain, death, and horror for everyone involved. <laughs> And they're like, okay, thanks, bye. That was a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> and then you get up to this cabin and, oh man, it's a wreck. But Dale's face, he's just like, this is ours. It's a mansion. That's it. And like for me, as a horror fan, I'm like, this is the Evil Dead cabin. I can't believe this is ours. <laughs> oh my God. You know, this place looks great. All it needs is a bit of tidying up, a bit of, bit of work on it. And you've got yourself a little home. But you've also got nine teens all sat around a campfire talking about the Memorial Day Massacre. And we flash back through Chad's story of these group of teens 20 years before who were out there partying. And uh, uh, was it one hillbilly or two? I think it was two. It looked, I, like, it two, looked yeah. like two at one point. And they attacked the teens. 
and killed them all, uh, apart from one. And she's been captured, tortured and raped and is being held in an institution. So you're like, okay, there's something in this wood, in, in these woods. Can't wait for it to start coming around and kicking ass so that the guys can, you know, do their thing. But they find a, a, a swimming hole, don't they? They decide to go skinny dipping, yeah. Yeah, all the teens. Allison decides to climb up the rock and, you know, Tucker decides he wants a closer look. <laughs> Dale's blindfolded himself. And Allison sees the perverts. <laughs> yeah. Screams and falls off the rock and, and goes under the water. And, of course, after not coming back to the surface, Dale jumps into the water and rescues her. As just the other teens realise what's going on, they see this unconscious person being dragged into the boat. We got your friend! We got your friend! <laughs> and so you can see how that would look from the college kid's perspective. Hey! We got your friend! Why the hell are they running away? Hey! And as a matter of fact, there was, I think the, the director even edited together a sequence of the film yeah. from the college kid's perspective just to show, you know, to make it but then they were like, but this is just generic horror movie trash now. Yeah, so yeah. It we doesn't actually work. Keep but the camera focused on as a joke, and Dale. It works. <laughs> I like the bit where she's like, oh, you know, I'm pretty sure one of them was eating her face. And I'm like, <laughs> mouth to mouth. He was giving her mouth, mouth to mouth. mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so they end up bringing her home. And uh, you have that sequence where she wakes up in the morning where she's, <laughs> she's in, you know, Dale's overalls and there's a dog staring at her menacingly. <laughs> menacingly. Jangers menacingly. Yeah, but she doesn't know that. But you know, it's the way it's the film yeah. language portrays it. Yeah, exactly. Like you are trapped. You know, yeah. Cujo is going to rip your throat out if you move off this bed. And then, well, the way it's filmed as well, the door just opens. Yeah. yeah. And, and Dale starts walking in. Horror movie moment. And you're like, oh my God, what's going to happen? And she, she starts screaming. Then he he starts screaming and she's like, what's going on? He's like, oh, you don't like pancakes. You don't like pancakes. Oh, okay. And he just walks right back out again. And she's like, pancakes? <laughs> uh, oh, oh, it's the pancakes. You hate pancakes. I'm, I'm going to make you something else. I'll just... Well, just a small bit of continuity here <laughs> is that when you see him preparing this lovely breakfast, he's got these fresh daisies or something in the jug. Yeah. And as soon as the door opens and he goes through, they're all wilted and dead. <laughs> and I was like... At first, I was like, maybe that was a, a decision they made. It was just like, everything he's doing is just turned to shit and died. <laughs> you know? Yes. It's just like, it's not working. But that same uh, that same jar of flowers, before they've wilted, you see much later in the film, in the cabin. And I yeah. was like, so they did switch it. But <laughs> they didn't just die. They switched... Continuity. Yeah, continuity, yeah. That's Drangers. That's my dog, Drangers. He, he looks mean, but he's just a big old marshmallow. You can just pat him around the nose. <laughs> The, the teens under Chad's leadership decide that they're going to head to the cabin. You know, they need to rescue Allison. There's no point calling the cops because it's us versus them. And this is where everything just kind of deteriorates quite rapidly. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, the, uh, the rich kid who owns the car, who it's his daddy's car, yeah. he, he runs off to go get the police. But the others decide they're going to launch an attack. But yeah. this is not after, you know, we've had this, these heartwarming relationship building scenes between Allison and, and, and Dale, you know, where they're playing his favorite board game. Yeah. You know, it's a version of Trivia Pursuit in a way. And you find out that he's actually really intelligent or he has a you know photographic memory. He remembers facts. He, yeah, he remembers facts, but he's really clumsy as well. Yeah. And yeah. she says to him, that obviously, it's kind of like a self-esteem thing for him because he's clumsy. He looks down on himself. But yeah. in these little moments, Allison can see the goodness He's, exactly yeah and so you have those nice moments but then you know they decide they got work to do well i mean yeah tucker's gone outside to cut up some wood and hasn't checked if there's anything inside and you have the the horror trophy build up where one of the teens is sneaking up to the cabin you know to look through the window you can hear the chainsaw in the background and Tucker just brings that chainsaw right down into a hornet's nest. <laughs> that there was one of the originally conceived scenes before the script was ever even put together. Well, I mean, this film's so brilliantly. Him running around the corner, swinging this chainsaw. Texas chainsaw style. Yeah, yeah. and you're just like, you'd run. Oh yeah, you you'd see totally somebody running run. around like a lunatic with a chainsaw. But at the same time, if you, because like, like I said, we've watched this film so many times. Watching it now, I, st I kind of put myself standing still with the cameraman. And if you watch Alan Tudyk, 
running around with that chainsaw. He, it's all random because he's trying to kill the, the bees. And all yeah. the guys are like, oh my God. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just go running off. I will say that some of the... C There's like three CGI bits in the film. Yeah. They've limited it quite a bit. But the, the bees chasing him, a little bit ropey. Well, I mean, not as... Not as ropey as that one that lands on that guy's nose. Yes, yeah. But it's, I mean, the, the bees aren't the, the, the joke. It's, no, no. It's the fact you've got Tucker and one of the teens running side by side. And they look at each other like, <laughs> why are you running? Why are you running? And the teen just goes running, impaling himself on that massive branch. And you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. And he has that fleeting moment where the bee lands on his face. And it's like, ah, oh, you guys. <laughs> But Tucker heads back to the cabin and explains what's happened to, to Allison and, and Dale. And I like the like it where he's like, yeah, your friend must be allergic to bees as well because he was running like hell. Well, and they I'm... didn't see what happened to him. <laughs> <laughs> but it cuts to the teens and they see the body and they're just like, right, okay, we need to, we, we definitely need to attack. These guys are planned to kill Dale us. Dale has carved a message in, with the axe. <laughs> yeah, we, we got, got your, your friend. friend. <laughs> and I'm like, how... How are you supposed to not see Tucker and Dale as bumbling hillbillies when everything they do seems to look like they're bumbling hillbillies? <laughs> right. But it's just Chad with that fucking axe where he's just, you know, he's got this blood frenzy. Completely, yeah. He, he tells them that it's like the greatest moment of their lives and they're like, what, getting killed? And yeah. he's like, no, to be alive. Like, and so, you know, now Dale and Allison are out digging a shitter hole yeah. outside. And uh, the kids decide they're going to launch another rescue attack. Oh, one of the greatest moments <laughs> and this... of horror filming. Exactly. Now, one of the kids goes running at, at Dale and Allison with a big stick. Yeah. And, you know, he kind of trips himself up and he falls <laughs> into the hole. Dale knocks Allison out with the shovel and the kid impales himself and slides down the pole, bleeding all over Dale. And it's just like, <laughs> what the hell? The other kid, he's got like a small pocket knife, goes yeah. running at Tucker. You know, Tucker can't hear him, you know, no, the, 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 he's got a wood chipper the on. The wood chipper's going away and he just steps out of the way and the kid just throws himself. Oh, man. Into the wood chipper. <laughs> you know, and that's the funny bit is that you've got Tucker holding onto his legs. You know, it reminds me of the girl from Evil Dead 2, yeah. you know, he's holding onto his legs. Are you okay? Stop squirming! <laughs> Yeah, it, it's fantastic. And again, that wood chipper scene was the other conceived moment. It was when they had that and a couple of ideas. They were like, that's it. We, this film is, is going to keep growing from those moments. Yeah. And in, no matter how many times you watch this film and you know that moment's coming, you, you're going <sighs> to laugh every time he goes yeah. flying into that wood chipper. <laughs> are you okay? And so, yeah, you know, and then it, Tucker and Dale were just like, that's it. What the, the hell's going on? The you know? kids have, must have signed some kind of suicide pact. <laughs> They're killing themselves all over the place. And they convince Allison. They're just like, right, okay, we need to protect you. Because, you know, if they've done the suicide pact, they'll They're, they're to trying to kill you as well. You as well. <laughs> and the teens have managed to hook up with their friend now and the local sheriff and explain to him what's going on. And I, I love that moment where the sheriff comes around the corner and you've got Tucker and Dale with the pair of legs. You've just dragged it from the chipper. Yeah. And and Tucker just gives his explanation to the cop. And he's, he's already just said it to Dale. He says, he, you know, we've had a doozy of the day. You know, these teens have gone around. They're, they're trying to kill themselves. We've got one unconscious in the cabin. Dale's like, yeah, she's in my in my bedroom. <laughs> she can maybe explain the whole thing. If, 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 uh, if I hadn't knocked her unconscious with a shovel. <laughs> And you're just looking at the cop, and the cop's just like, yeah, I bet you think I'm a, I'm a moron, don't you? And the, the, the guys are just in fear for their lives. You know, they've come up here to, to fish, <laughs> and all of a sudden they're, 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 they're involved in attempted murder and under siege. And they take the cop inside, and you love those little moments in films where you see something and it's going to pop up again. And this is one of those moments. The cop is listening to their story, and he's getting all ready to... Uh, uh, try and investigate and try and unravel what's going on and he leans on a beam that's been loose in the film since the beginning and this piece of wood swings down and smashes him right in the face. <laughs> but he doesn't die. 
<laughs> stumbles outside, picks up the radio, tries to call for help, and that's it. He hits the floor. <laughs> and then, and then, if that's not even enough, one of the other teens jumps out of the car, grabs his gun, points it at Tucker and Dale, and Dale's just like, "You need to." turn the safety off on the side of the gun and Tucker's just like, what? And the kid <laughs> turns the gun in front of his face and blam, blows his head off. Oh, you gotta take the safety off on the side there. Don't do it. Ah! Yeah, I, I think guns are a lot harder to, to pull the trigger than that. You just, not in horror movies. Not in a horror movie, no. You know, you well, apparently the effect was supposed to be a little bit more over the top where his brains went flying over the top of the car and nice. whatnot, but they were like, <laughs> we'll tone it down, tone it down a little bit. So out of nine teens, we've got one with Tucker and Dale, we've still got Chad, and three others? Three left. There's a lot of fodder in this film. Let's see what happens next. <laughs> The teens end up capturing Tucker after trying to kill Jangers as well. And they hang him from a tree, set up a trap around him. And Dale manages to actually rescue him, but not after they've removed his bowling fingers. Yeah, and sent them back. And I'm like, you know, for the multiple time of this film, I'm just like, Chad is such a fucking asshole. Chad I is a dick. I really hope he fucking dies because <laughs> in a way... He's got everybody killed. These guys, Tucker and Dale, have not killed a single person. Yeah. You know, they haven't hurt any. Even when Dale had the nail gun and was firing out the house, he missed every shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> and they head back to the cabin just as Chad and one of, one of the other teens is, are trying to rescue Allison. Yeah, yeah. And Allison is trying to be a, a psychotherapist in the future when she finishes <laughs> college. Did you say a psychotherapist? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. A psychologist, <laughs> psycho. She works with brains and people. I'm getting my bachelor's degree in psychology. Oh, that, uh, th oh. S so. And she manages to sit Dale and Chad down opposite each other and get them to explain what they've experienced in this situation. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit over the top. You know, her lines are like textbook. Almost, yeah. but you know, Dale's just like, "Oh, you did everything perfect," you know. But yeah, it it doesn't take long to really upset upset uh, Chad. Well, I mean, it turns out that his mother was the survivor of the Memorial Day massacre. Yeah, and she was pregnant at the time, and she had to watch her husband die, or or his body was never found, and she's the one being locked up. And I'm like, this kid's got issues. Yeah, you know. Isn't that always the case in horror movies, though? There's always always one of the main characters <laughs> who's got problems. Well, yeah, we needed an instigator for the whole film you yeah. know, as well. <laughs> but two, two of his remaining friends are outside, and they come running in with a weed whacker or strimmer <laughs> yeah, and yeah. miss Tucker and stick it right in the other teen's face and rip her face off to pieces. They then end up setting fire to that guy accidentally... <laughs> And then the blonde girl... who's well, it's been... Chad who throws the other yeah, thing. Yeah, Chad throws the petrol. And the blonde girl, who's been ditzy all the way through the movie, and you just knew was going to die, just sits there among some petrol gas canisters and the fire going on and lights a cigarette. Yeah. Well, doesn't she throw, like, moonshine or something on him, which sets the fire off even more? Yeah. And then she just hides in the corner and lights her cigarette. She's like, whew. And then we watch Tucker's cabin explode. <laughs> That's probably the saddest moment of the film, really. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There was a really sad moment before that where, you know, the house is under siege. The gunshots are coming through. The fishing And they're scene. both lying there. <laughs> and Dale says to Tucker, I don't even like fishing. I hate fishing. I'm sorry, Tucker. Did I hurt your feelings? I'm sorry. Yeah, you kind of did. Tucker's heart just breaks right there. He's just like, you've been fishing with me all this time and you don't even like it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so brilliant. That's what friendships are made of. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. They're, they're, just, they're moments, they're, they're script writing. Even when they're with Alison, yeah. and she's seeing it from their point of view, she's like, these guys are really sweet. This is whole, a whole misunderstanding. But we've got seven dead bodies, eight dead bodies because of the sheriff as well, <laughs> you know, around this place. And Chad actually ends up capturing Alison after they crash Tucker's truck. Yeah. And takes her off to a, a, a wood mill. 
And he's all fucked up. I mean, half his face is burnt. Yeah, I mean, they were going for like a Harvey Two-Face kind of thing on him. Yeah, but like a split t- personality. I was just, I, I, I couldn't buy it, you know. There's one thing that irked me about the film was that the amount of damage done to him. He must have been in agony, you know. And it's like he doesn't feel, he doesn't he's show psych- any of it. Yeah, well, I know he's a psychopath. Spoiler, yeah. there's spoilers, there's a big twist coming up, you yeah, know. He's, yeah. he's. I mean, we already knew at this point as well that he was the guy from the beginning. Yes, yeah. You know, so he's he's going to live but how is he going to get through this situation and he's tied Alison to that big saw machine and he's going to cut her in half and Dale goes and hooks himself up with this badass looking armor you know he's got a chainsaw and a, a, a big metal mask he's got hooks on his boots you know and he goes in there to rescue her but in Dale's own little way he's not a fighter no you know so when he ends up actually fighting Chad he's mainly on the defense oh yeah completely but then he does get a couple of good hits in and he even gets that sweet looking I know I know it's CGI and it looks a bit off but he gets that sweet axe throw which saves Allison so that's so he's saved her twice now he's definitely going to get laid at some <laughs> point you know and they both race up into the office of this woodmill and come across the evidence that Chad's dad was the hillbilly killer from the Memorial Day Massacre. Right, yeah. And just to put the kind of funny exclamation mark on the end of this film, Dale throws chamomile tea in Chad's face that messes with his asthma and kicks him out of the window. <laughs> Now, originally, they were going to have him land in, like, another chipper or get impaled by something. Yeah, yeah. But they were like, well, we've done it multiple times, so they kind of left it open-ended. Yeah, well, they just closed the window, and they're just like, oh, he's done. But then, they obviously, he must escape. I, I only imagine that they come back downstairs and realise his body's gone. Yeah. And re- rush over to get uh, Tucker, because Tucker was heavily injured after the car accident, and now he's in hospital. And he's just like, Dale, going bowling. <laughs> you know, because Alison turns out, you know, she pretty much loves all the same stuff that Dale loves. You know, she, she's worked on a farm, so she can work really well. She, you know, loves playing board games with him. And she is a really good bowler. I totally forgot, though, about the, the scene where they find the girl's finger. Yeah. And Tucker's just like, that, that doesn't look right. <laughs> It's a joke, but yeah, it's fine. It's if, fine. If I only have one problem with the film, it's this final sequence. Because Dale and Alison are bowling, and Dale basically says to one of his friends, you know, do go for what you want. You know, there's nothing stopping you. You, you know, most that they can say is no. So, you know that girl over there, you know, go and talk to her. And this guy goes over, but we don't see what he does. He probably just talks to her. She screams and falls over and knocks herself out. Yeah, and then we see him dragging her away to get help. Right. But it doesn't look like it that. It doesn't look like that. <laughs> to me, it looks like he might have clobbered her in the face. And Dale was just like, ah, fuck it. I'm making out with Alison. <laughs> oh my God. Should we go help her? Hell no. So, in favourite scenes from Tucker and Dale versus uh, Evil. There are a lot. They're mainly just kills. There's just just the wood chipper, the the strimmer to the face. I mean, I even like the little the spear death because I totally forgot about how that guy died. Yeah, you know, he yeah. just trips on himself and impales himself. The the guy with the 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 gunshot wound to the face. I mean, the sheriff. I felt quite bad for because accidents happen, and I wish I I wish I'd seen Chad fall into the wood chipper, but. The film's mainly about Tucker and Dale, and some of my favourite scenes are just their conversations. Like I said, you know, I love Tyler Labine, you know, I just think he's really funny, and being a big, cuddly, bearded man, you know, I I relate to that. But I I love fucking Tucker as well, I love Alan Tudyk. (laughs) Sorry, I can't say that with a straight face. Yeah, he's he's just there, and he's got... I can never tell if he's chewing something in his mouth or it's just the way he speaks yeah. because through the movie he just starts constantly talking like that the seven draw you know and it just it just fits so well but he's also very articulate he's very intelligent and he's trying to be the smart one but then he's he's taken out the picture and Dale becomes the hero and gets the girl who is pretty damn fine <laughs> you know I only ever saw him one other thing after this yeah Piranha 3 double D does she get in a bikini I think so oh wow nice <laughs> Yeah, you know, this whole film is easily a favourite scene. You know, the whole film is just fantastic. Um, You know, 
the, I guess my first memorable scene is just that drive by at the beginning. You know, yeah. the slow mo passing by of the two cars and them Tucker and Dale looking over. It's like that's just perfect. It's the music, the editing, the camera work, the actors' performances. They just nail it. You know the. You know, it doesn't go into parody, you know, scary movie territory. No, that's the key, know? yeah. They play it straight. And so every sequence is memorable. Uh, you know, I, lo I love the sequence where he tells him to smile and laugh when you go and talk to this girl <laughs> and show confidence. You know, it's just every little perfect moment like that. It's yeah. Just, the chemistry between the character, between the actors portraying these characters, they do it so well. And so it, the jokes don't even get old. You know, they, they're they fine on repeat viewings. And yes, there are a couple of jokes where I just kind of go, oh, yeah. you know, not that funny. But, you know, within the next few minutes, there's something else that was going to make you laugh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know all the deaths, so memorable. <laughs> You'll never forget the guy jumping into the wood chipper. You just won't, and, you know. And when you recommend this friend to your friends, or you sit and watch it with people that have never seen it before, you get to watch their reaction to watching <laughs> this guy jump into the wood chipper all over again, and you get to enjoy it again. <laughs> uh, so I easily recommend Tucker and Dale versus Evil. It's one of the best in the horror comedy genre. It plays on your expectations of a slasher and the slasher formula while still giving you the gruesome deaths and lots of blood. It retains its humour with the characters and I found myself laughing on every repeat viewing. Would easily watch it again. Great performances, awesome concept and it's perfectly executed. It's a must watch film. I fucking love this movie. You know, I... I want to say it's one of those films that you, you get out every year to, to watch. But then again, it's also one of those films that if you watch it the first time, you'll love it. You don't have to rush back and watch it. You know, give it a couple of years and then when you look on your DVD shelf, you go, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. I haven't seen that in fucking ages. And you'll stick it on and you'll just love it again all over again. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Merry Christmas. Here's the good laugh, huh? Oh, yeah. To the good laugh, man.